the sacrificial victim. Bible verses of the day, Matthew 21, 37 to 39. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, this is the, the heir, come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and called and killed him. Together, we continue with Sister Mary Margaret Stepank, Breaking the Bread of the Word, series number eight. The violence and betrayal that Jesus experiences at the hands of the chief priests and Pharisees, as well as his own disciples, are prefigured in today's Old Testament story of Joseph the Dreamer. The latter's awesome dreams are deeply resented by his siblings as they saw to foretell Joseph's future dominion over them. Their dislike is exacerbated by their father's preferential love for Joseph. Israel or Jacob loves Joseph more than all his other sons because the latter has been born to him in his old age. The jealousy degenerates into a murderous plot. Far from his father's protection and wearing the long tunic Israel lovingly made for him, Joseph falls into their trap. The feeble efforts of Reuben and Judah to soften his tragic fate led to Joseph being sold as a slave and into his redemptive destiny in Egypt. The, mistress, the, the mistreatment of Joseph and the prophets of the past will fully bear upon Jesus as he undergoes his passion and death on the cross. The same violent fate is being experienced by today's Christian disciples. The life of Archbishop Romero of El Salvador is an example of Octavio Duran, Archbishop Romero, friend, pastor, prophet, in Marinol, March 2010. Page 18 to 22. We were only a little way from the small church in the community of San Antonio, Los Ranchos, in Chalantenango, El Salvador, when the car carrying San Salvador Archbishop Oscar Arnulfo Romero was rudely stopped by Salvadoran army soldiers. They made us get out of the vehicle and search for evidence to accuse us of being subversives, as happened to so many other religious and innocent people during that time. Romero was going to celebrate the corn festival with a mass in the community of San Antonio at the end of the 1970s when respect for human rights was eroding at an accelerating rate in my country. The Salvadoran government began a campaign of repression against the Catholic Church, accusing it of insurgency and killing priests, catechists, and lay faithful. The people complain about the abuse to the legal aid office of the Archdiocese of San Salvador. And Archbishop Romero denounced the case, the cases of abuse each Sunday at Mass. On the steep road to the church in San Antonio, the local people who had gathered to greet the Archbishop with religious hymns witnessed the affront the Archbishop suffered. After long in interrogations, we continue on the church the people receive the archbishop happily with hugs and music, but Romero's uneasiness after what had happened was obvious. In the church, the archbishop trembling and his voice cracking asked that the mass be held outside. He was concerned that if something worse should happen, such as shooting, the people would be able to escape into the open countryside. Suddenly, while still in the church, a little boy and girl went up to Romero. She hugged him, and the boy took hold of the cross. The archbishop 
were around his chest. It was like a signal that everyone needs. Is Simon, the Syrian who helped carry Jesus' cross in our own lives to help us carry our crosses. I took a photo at that moment that was circulated around the world in books, magazines, and newspapers. In the photo, in the photo, a soldier can be seen carrying his rifle, the nails of crucifixion. In that era, this happened in the end of 1979, a few months before Romero was assassinated. Second reading, second reading, Matthew 21, 33, 43, and 45 to 46. Today's parable of the wicked tenants contains a thinly disguised reference to the violence that Jesus will suffer at the hands of the chief priests and Pharisees. The Son of God will be killed through the instigation of religious leaders who fear the status quo and their security or threaten the mistreatment of the prophets of the past fully bears upon Jesus as he undergoes his passion and death on the cross. The religious leaders of Israel have failed in their responsibility to nurture the spiritual growth and fruitfulness of God's chosen people. Moreover, they have become agents of bloodshed and injustice, putting to death an innocent man sent by God as Messiah. Though they read the scriptures, they fail to grasp their meaning because their hearts are blinded. They cannot recognize that Jesus of Nazareth is the servant Messiah, but the Son of God in suffering violent death becomes the means of salvation for all. Christ's resurrection is his glorious vindication. The season of Lent is an opportune time to repent of all the violence we have committed. It is a fitting time to offer to the Lord the spiritual fruitfulness of a humble and peace-seeking heart. Lent call us to overcome violence within our heart and in our midst and to look at today's reality with the eyes of faith. We are also called to unite the injustice in the world and our unmerited sufferings with Jesus that they too may become means of salvation in the here and now. The following story is fascinating. It gives insight into how Jesus' Savior was subjected to torment and death. It also teaches us how to avoid the wicked ways of insensitivity, violence, and injustice. Look into his eyes in Anthony DeMello, the son of the bird, New York, image books 45 and 46. The commander of the occupation troops said to the mayor of the mountain village, we know that you are hiding a traitor unless you give him up to us. We shall harass your people by every means in our power. The village was indeed hiding a man who seemed good and innocent and was loved by all. But what could the major do now that the warfare of the village was at stake? Days of discussion in the village council led to no conclusion. So the major finally took the matter up with the priest. Priest and major spent a whole night searching the scriptures and finally came up with a te text that said, It is better that one man die to save the nation. So the major handed over the innocent man whose screams echoed through the village as he was tortured and put to death. Twenty years later, a prophet came to the village, went right up to the major and said, How could you have done this? The man was sent by God to be the savior of this country, and you handed him over to be tortured and killed. But where did I go wrong? pledged the mayor. The priest and I looked at the scripture and did what they commanded. That's where you were wrong, said the prophet. 
you looked at the scriptures, you should have also looked into his eyes. Meditation. Have I committed acts of violence and aggression against innocent persons? What do I do to ratify the wrong I have inflicted on others? Prayer. Oh, yes. oh Jesus, oh Jesus, you are meek and humble of heart. Make us instruments of your, in, of your, make us instruments of your justice and peace. Amen. Once again, oh Jesus, you are meek and humble of heart. Make us instruments of your justice and peace. Amen. Contemplative prayer. The following is the bread of the living word, word that will nourish us throughout the day. Please memorize it. He sent his son to them, Matthew 21, 37. He sent his son to them. Action. Be an instrument of peace to the people around you in your society. Participate in a peaceful rally if there is any possibility.